Good evening. According to a new report, over 600 U.S. Navy SEALs, which is about a quarter of all the active duty SEALs in America, they are currently facing the very real possibility of not being able to go on missions any longer. That's because of the new military vaccine mandate. Meanwhile, over in New York, the new governor has just put in place a mask mandate on all school kids, up to and including children who, has, who are as young as two years of age. And New York is now the only state who's doing this, as there are currently 16 other states, as well as the District of Columbia, which have likewise put in place school mask mandates. However, these rules are not exactly created equally, which you likely know for yourself if you watched the Emmy Awards. The only people who are wearing masks at that event was the hired help. But according to a statement from the LA County Health Office, that was a-okay. Let's go through it all together. This is your daily Facts Matter update, and I'm your host, Roman, from the Epic Times. And now let's begin today's discussion by talking about the military, and more specifically, about the vaccine mandates which are being pushed upon them. According to a new report, there are hundreds of U.S. Navy SEALs who are currently at risk of being blocked from deployment after they have failed to get vaccinated. And the number of SEALs that this affects is not small. In fact, this report states that this dis dispute between the U.S. Navy SEALs and the Pentagon involves a quarter or more of all active duty members. And think about that for a moment. A quarter or more of all U.S. Navy SEALs, which is about 625 SEALs, they might be barred from going on missions once the vaccine mandate goes into full effect. Now, the reason behind this dispute has to do with these soldiers seeking to get a religious exemption from the vaccine. Here's how the lawyer who is representing several of these Navy SEALs describes the situation. My clients include several Navy SEALs who are a small part of a large group of SEALs and other military members who are being asked to choose between their faith and their ability to serve our nation. They have been told that if they seek a religious accommodation, they likely will no longer be able to serve our country as Navy SEALs and have been given an arbitrary deadline to comply with the vaccine mandate. And according to this lawyer, this arbitrary deadline does not leave enough time for a soldier to actually work through a religious exemption. Here's what he added, quote, My clients need time, and we are seeking at least a 90-day extension to the vaccine mandate compliance deadline they have been given. Similarly, Pastor Jeff Durbin, who has been a minister to many of these Navy SEALs, he said that between a quarter to a full one-third of all active duty SEALs are currently involved with the dispute against the Pentagon, including some of them who have actually already had COVID and therefore have natural immunity. Here's what this pastor told a news outlet. There are hundreds of Navy SEALs who have not been vaccinated, do not want to take the vaccine, or who have had and recovered from COVID and have the benefit of natural immunity. A large number of SEALs that I'm speaking on behalf of are facing the very difficult decision that even with a legitimate religious exemption that is based upon their commitments to Christ, the gospel, God's law, and the Constitution, they will no longer be Navy SEALs. For your reference, by the way, the reason that many devout Christians are objecting to the vaccine is because during the research and development of the mRNA vaccines, regardless of which one it is, they employed fetal cell lines, which are cells grown in a laboratory that are derived from aborted fetuses. And this pastor, he said that he is worried that this approach that the military is taking might work to essentially remove all devout Christians from the teams, from the U.S. Navy SEALs. Here's what he said, quote, They are essentially being asked to make a decision between their commitments to the Lordship of Christ and their careers as Navy SEALs. Our country should be very concerned about what this would do to military readiness. Losing hundreds of Navy SEALs because of their legitimate and sincerely held Christian beliefs could be devastating to us as a nation. And besides the Navy SEALs, here are some of the other vaccine deadlines that have been implemented throughout the different branches of the military. Active duty Army soldiers have to be fully vaccinated by December the 15th. Active duty Air Force have to be fully vaccinated by November the 2nd. Active duty U.S. Navy have to be fully vaccinated by November the 28th. And active duty Marines, they have to be fully vaccinated by December 28th. Now, you might be asking yourself, what will happen to those who refuse to comply? And more specifically, if they get discharged, what kind of discharge will it be? Well, there are currently two schools of thought on this matter that are battling it out over in Washington, D.C. The first one comes from a bipartisan amendment which just passed the House Armed Services Committee. This amendment, it would be made to the National Defense Authorization Act, and it would prohibit any discharge except for honorable for troops who refuse the vaccine. So what that means is that if a service member, regardless of which branch he's in, if he refuses the vaccine and their superior decides to let them go, they can only be honorably discharged. 
Here's how Congressman Mark Green, who is a veteran, a doctor, and also the author of this amendment, here's how he described it. This was a bipartisan amendment. Every Democrat on the House Armed Services Committee agreed to it. No American who raises their hand to serve our nation should be punished for making a highly personal medical decision. Furthermore, Congressman Green's bill also proposes that troops who have previously had COVID, meaning they have natural immunity, they should be exempted from the vaccine mandate. However, even though this bill had bipartisan support over in the House Armed Services Committee, the Biden administration, they just came out against it, arguing that these soldiers should be dishonorably discharged. Here's part of a statement that was released from the Office of Management and Budget of the Biden administration. This provision would detract from readiness and limit a commander's options for enforcing good order and discipline when a service member fails to obey a lawful order to receive a vaccination. Commanders must have the ability to give orders and take appropriate disciplinary measures in order to have a uniform force to fight with discipline. Furthermore, according to the Pentagon, service members who either don't have a religious or medical exemption but still remain unvaccinated, they will face disciplinary measures. Here's specifically what the Pentagon spokesman said on this matter. Our commanders have a range of tools available to them short of using the uniform code of military justice to again try to get men and women in the department to make the right decision here. Now, we here at the Epic Times, we reached out to Congressman Mark Green to get his opinion on the statements which came from the Biden administration regarding his bill, and he got back to us via email saying this, I am dismayed and concerned that the Biden administration is trying to remove my amendment to the National Defense Authorization Act that prevents anything but an honorable discharge for service members who refuse to get the COVID-19 vaccine. This was a bipartisan amendment. Not one Democrat on the House Armed Services Committee opposed it. Nothing is more telling of the current political climate than the Biden administration refusing to respect the rights of our military that every House Democrat on the committee voted for. And so we'll just have to wait and see whether this bill is actually able to pass the full House and become law now that it has received such strong criticism from the Biden administration. And by the way, for your reference, since it's out of the committee, this bill will be voted on in the full House likely even sometime later this week. If you'd like to read more about the military's vaccine mandates, including that story over about the U.S. Navy SEALs, I'll throw several links to these articles into the description box below this video for you to check out. And all I ask in return is that you take a quick second to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. And now, before we move on over and discuss how New York has just instituted a new mask mandate on kids as young as two years old, well, I would like to take a quick second and introduce our sponsor for today's episode, which I'll do from the sound booth. That's right, Roman. Although today we're not in the sound booth, we're in a living room looking area. In fact, take a look at this. So this right here is what's known as a US dollar. And in my opinion, with the way that the government is acting right now, printing these things into oblivion, unfortunately, within probably one generation, this is just my opinion, I don't give any financial advice, but this likely will not be the world's reserve currency any longer. Which is why every single month what I do is I get one of these boxes delivered to me from American Hartford Gold. And American Hartford Gold is a phenomenal gold dealer. They're, they don't only sponsor my channel, they're one of my favorite gold dealers to work with. And every single month, I buy gold and silver from them because I believe that it had value 5,000 years ago, it has value today, and it'll likely have value well into the future. And take a look at these beautiful pieces that they send me. You got these beautiful one ounce silver American Walking Liberties here. And then you have this beautiful one ounce Canadian maple. I don't know if you can see how shiny that is, it's beautiful. Yeah, and right, if, if you order from American Heart for Gold, they have a special going on for our watchers, for our viewers. If, uh, depending on how much you buy, they'll send you $1,500 worth of free silver. And on top of that, they'll send you a very special gift right here. I'll take a look and show you what it is. By the way, American Hartford Gold, they have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. They're super friendly and uh, nice to work with. When you call them, not only are their staff friendly, but if they put you on hold, their hold music is a speech from Ronald Reagan, so I never even mind when I have to hold it a little bit. And yeah, they're just awesome. They can send you physical gold and silver to your doorstep, or they can deposit it directly into your IRA account, making the whole thing super simple. And not only will they send you free silver, they'll also send you this hat which has written on it everything you need to survive a crisis. God, gold, and guns. So claim your $1,500 worth of free silver and your free hat. You can click on the link in the description box below or give them a call at 866-242-2352 or text Roman to 655-32. Now Roman in the studio, back to you. And now let's move on over to New York. Last week, the new governor of New York, Ms. Kathy Hochul, she announced that all state-regulated childcare centers across the entire state, they must mandate masks for children ages two years old and above. Let me just repeat that. The governor of New York just imposed a mask mandate on all kids two years of age and above in childcare facilities throughout the entire state. 
Here's specifically what she said in a statement last Wednesday when she made this announcement. Starting today, we're going to require masks in childcare and daycare centers because if you're watching the national news, the scariest announcements coming out every single morning are the number of children now contracting COVID. She further added that this mask mandate is at least partially a result of there being no vaccine available for young children. Here's what she said. We don't have a vaccine available for 5 to 11-year-olds. I'm very anxious to get this approved. And as soon as it is, we'll be working with parents and pediatricians and schools to make sure that the children are vaccinated. But we're not hearing that will occur for a number of months yet. By the way, what is interesting to note here is that back in May, so just a few months ago, Governor Andrew Cuomo, while he was still in office, he announced a similar measure, which would have forced masks on kids who are as young as two years old. However, back then, the pushback against that mandate was so strong, it was so vocal, that New York State actually rescinded that order in just the matter of a few days. But with a new governor in place, here we are again. And New York is now the only state that's taking this approach. For instance, over in Pennsylvania, just earlier this month, the health secretary there issued an order which requires everyone to wear masks inside of K-12 school buildings, inside of early learning programs, as well as inside of child care centers. And in fact, here's how the governor of Pennsylvania, Mr. Tom Wolf, he's a Democrat, here's how he justified this decision. My office has received an outpouring of messages from parents asking the administration to protect all children by requiring masks in schools. The science is clear. The Delta variant is highly transmissible and dangerous to the unvaccinated, many of whom are children too young to receive the vaccine. Requiring masks in schools will keep our students safer and in the classroom where we all want them to be. He further went on to say that he was going to leave the decision up to the local school boards. However, because there was too much of what he called misinformation being spread online, well, here's what he said. I preferred for local school boards to make this decision. Unfortunately, an aggressive nationwide campaign is spreading misinformation about mask wearing and pressuring and intimidating school districts to reject mask policies that will keep kids safe and in school. And this is not something just happening in Pennsylvania and New York, as you're seeing a similar situation play out across all of America right now. As of today, as of the filming of this episode, 16 states, as well as the District of Columbia, they require masks to be worn in schools. But do you know where masks don't have to be worn? Well, if you guessed the Emmy Awards, then you are correct. Because if you were one of the few people that actually watched the Emmys this year, and I do mean few since the viewership numbers were among the lowest ever, well, you likely noticed that none of the celebrities wore face masks. In fact, the only people that wore face masks at that event were the hired help. And having seen that, you might have paused for a moment and you might have said to yourself, wait a minute, doesn't Los Angeles currently have a masking policy in place? And you would be correct. In Los Angeles, just like in those 16 other states that we just mentioned, they have a very strict mask policy. In fact, in LA County, regardless of your vaccination status, you have to wear a mask inside of a K-12 school, a child care facility, a daycare center, and so on. And this rule does in fact apply to settings outside of schools as well. Here's in fact what this rule states about indoor events. Everyone, regardless of vaccination status, must wear a mask in all indoor public settings, venues, gatherings, and public and private businesses in Los Angeles County. Now, you might look at that rule, then you might look at the kids who are sitting in school for eight hours a day wearing a face mask, then you might look at the celebrities who are mingling, hugging, and kissing on the red carpet, and you might say to yourself, wait a minute, something here seems amiss. However, you would be incorrect, because LA County has a special exemption. In fact, here's a statement from the LA County Health Office. LA County's health officer order requires everyone to wear a mask indoors, whether vaccinated or unvaccinated. However, exceptions are made for film, television, and music productions as additional safety modifications are made for these controlled interactions. The Emmy Awards show is a television production and persons appearing on the show are considered performers. Now the statement then goes on to say that everyone at that event was vaccinated and had a negative COVID test, which sounds reassuring, but still ironic, given the fact that in almost every other setting in Los Angeles, being vaccinated would still mean that you would have to wear a mask. Regardless, if you'd like to read more about these mask mandates which are being instituted around the country, as well as the interesting exemptions that are being made for celebrities, I'll throw all those links into the description box below this video for you to check out. And again, all I ask in return is that you take a quick second to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. 
Now that you finished watching this episode of Facts Matter, I would highly recommend that you head on over to Epic TV and watch an awesome episode of Counterpunch in which Trevor Loudon explores the communist groups which are working to help flip North Carolina by setting up voter registration networks in minority communities. Here's a trailer for that episode. Today I'm going to focus on the great state of North Carolina on the American Eastern Seaboard. North Carolina is a big target for the left to boast the Communist Party of China and its minions operating at grassroots level in the country. Roy Cooper, he ordered all of the Confederate statues in North Carolina taken down. Have we seen a rash of this lately? Statues being pulled down by radicals? In 2017, Roy Cooper was very influential in bringing the Triangle Tire Company into Edgecombe County. Every major Chinese business is affiliated with the Chinese Communist Party. Chinese business and Chinese government are like that. You do not get big in business in China unless you cooperate with the Chinese Communist Party. So by bringing this big company to North Carolina, you basically brought the Chinese Communist Party into the state. If you'd like to check out that episode, as well as all the other awesome content over on Epic TV, I'll throw a link to it. It'll be right there at the very top of the description box. I hope you click on it. I hope you check it out. And I hope that you subscribe and join us on this journey of exploring this beautiful, beautiful world through honest journalism that is based in truth and tradition. Now, lastly, if you haven't already, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't already in order to get this type of honest news content delivered directly into your YouTube feed while YouTube still allows it. Also, consider hitting that notification bell so you can actually be notified of any new videos as we release them. And then lastly, if you have an Instagram account, consider following me at Epic Times Roman. I post behind the scenes research as well as spicy memes. And then until next time, I'm your host, Roman from the Epic Times. Stay informed and stay free.